Okay, so I've exported everything except for this last one, and this is the one that I was talking about, which is different from everything else. This is the mouth scrunch. Um, you know, it's the, this kind of shape here. And why this is different is it's, there's no symmetry to this, right? Um, this is just an asymmetrical shape, but you can do this to either side of your mouth. So we actually do need to make a symmetrical um, you know, shape of this. We need to make a, a right side version. And instead of having to re-sculpt this, which would be a little bit of a pain because it's not a simple shape to make, uh, we can do that in Maya. So what I'm going to do is export this one out as well, but I'm going to export it with um, the, append um, the appendix of left. So I'm just going to say uh, Jason head 30 mouth scrunch left, All right? And um, we're going to take a look at that uh, particular shape here in Maya because the way that we go ahead about making the uh, mirror of this is not so simple. Now, uh, it is possible to do some mirroring in ZBrush and it is possible to do mirroring in Maya but it won't work the way that you expect it to. And I'm just going to show you what that looks like here. So if we pop into uh, Maya real quick, and I'm going to go in and import in uh, my base, the base OBJ there, and press F to find it. And I'm going to go ahead and import in the uh, mouth scrunch left, which is this one here. OK, so uh, what I want to do uh, let's just go ahead and separate these. I'm just going to take uh, both of these and uh, center their pivots and freeze their transforms. And I'm just going to move that out of the way there. That's just going to be my, my base head. And this is going to be my, my scrunchy face. So uh, what I actually need are some, um, some copies of this. And actually, before I even begin, let's just take a look at how you might think this would work and why it won't work the way you expect. Now, obviously, this will create a blend shape between here, no problem. But if I were to duplicate this guy and just say, let's scale uh, him in negative x by negative 1 um, to get the opposite shape, looks good. But here's what happens. So if I were to take both of those shapes and then create a blend shape from it by going to my rigging menu and deform and choose blend shape. Um, actually, I can click on any one of these guys to access the blend shape node now. So this should be my first one, right? And that looks fine. It's doing what it's supposed to do. But when I go to the second one, here's what happens. Actually, that didn't even do what you ex what I expected it to do. <laughs> so that's fun. Uh, let's just see how that worked out. This is uh, polysurface one. That's uh, something else there. And hold on. Okay, I figured out what was going on wrong. <laughs> I had to pause the video for a second. All right, it is doing actually what it's supposed to do. Um, but I'm going to explain why I got confused for a moment. Um, so if I go to this blend shape here and I apply it, um, even though it looks like it's supposed to be going to the right, it still triggers us going to the left. Um, and what I would normally do in this case, if I were to um, put this guy back to his default shape, is uh, because this guy has a, a scale in negative one, um, I would normally want to go in and freeze transforms on that because I really do want everything to just be their normal default um, positions and values. So if I go to, um, I have my freeze transforms button here, but if you don't have that on your shelf, it's just by going to uh, modify freeze transforms and that'll set everything back to their normal values. If I were to create take that blend shape now and apply it. Notice how my guy flips around. Take that look at that in slow motion. He's actually flipping his vertices around, um, which is weird, right? It does actually create the right shape eventually. Um, if I were to go in to my polygons, or to my modeling rather, and choose um, mesh display reverse, it has actually created the shape, but it in the process of getting there, it's caused the mesh to flip around in a weird way. And this just has to do with the way that blend shapes work. They, be, they work on what's called a, a vertex ordering. And so whenever you are um, creating a blend shape, it's looking at 
what is the same vertex position between the two different meshes, uh, and how does that vertex position change over time? If I flip this around in negative 1, I've actually taken what's on the left side and put it over onto the right side. And so when this is trying to evaluate over here, um, in order to find the same vertex, it actually has to physically flip the model around, uh, which is why you saw doing that you know, weird uh, change there. Otherwise, it just simply, um, if we didn't freeze the transforms, it'll just completely repeat this shape even if the original shape looks like this. So if that sounds very confusing, well, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you a way around this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete everybody and restart. Uh, so I'm going to bring in my base shape again. right? I'm going to put him on his own layer just for the sake of it. Let's call that base. This doesn't really matter. Uh, it's just easier for me to work with. And uh, I'm going to bring in the mouth scrunch again. Okay, so what we're going to do here is is work around with a modifier um, that will take the shape that we create through the blend shape and apply it to a mesh that has the correct vertex order in order for it to apply properly to um, our base shape. All right, so here we got our mouth scrunch. And underneath this, we have our base shape. I'm just going to move my mouth scrunch over a little bit. And actually, for both of these, let's turn them both back on. Uh, I'm just going to make sure that they are centered pivots and freeze transforms. And um, I'm going to bring my other one, this guy over here. All right. So I'm going to require um, a couple copies of my base shape. So I'm just going to hit Control-D to duplicate. And I'm going to bring my copy over here. And then I'm going to name that guy, and we'll just call this call this Maker, all right, Maker. And then I'm going to call I'm just going to duplicate Maker now, and I'm going to call the duplicate um, Wrap. All right. So uh, over here, in my outliner. You can, oops, over here, in my outliner. There we go. Uh, you can see that I have my base shape, I have my mouth scrunch, I got maker, and I've got wrap. All right, so um, what I want to do here is create what's called a wrap deformer. Uh, and that wrap deformer is going to uh, allow me to transfer the, uh, the shape data onto something that has the same vertex order as my, um, as my base mesh. So to do that, I'm going to start out by creating um, a blend shape between these. And um, as you may recall, um, whoops, thank you Windows 10 for doing this lovely thing. Um, as you may recall, one of the ways that we just tried doing this was by duplicating off our, our uh, mouth scrunch and flipping it over in negative X. And I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do it in a special way. So I've duplicated a copy of my mouse scrunch, and I'm going to flip it over, negative 1 in scale x. So we get that. Now I'm going to go in, and I'm going to grab my maker. And I'm also going to scale that in negative, negative 1 in x. And that's pretty important, because now it means that I've done the same thing to both of these. And that, in this case, should work. Uh, I'm going to just take wrap really quick because it sits on top of maker. I'm just going to put that on its own layer really quickly just so that it doesn't get in the way of us seeing things. So I'm just going to call that wrap and, oh, I'll we'll call it wrap layer. And just hide that. All right. So what I'm going to do now is take my um, right mouth scrunch and I'll create a blend shape with my maker. So we'll just go in and go to. Rigging, deform, blend shape. I've created a little button for that right here as well, so whenever I want to make a blend shape, I just click on this button here from now on. And uh, if I click on either of these here, and we go to poly surface, and you'll see, yep, it's creating that right blend shape. But it would still cause a problem if I try to use this on my base head. So the way that we get around this is by turning back on our wrap uh, guy. 
And so they're both sitting on top of each other. There's two meshes here on top of each other. But I'm going to create what's called a wrap deformer, which means that um, basically it looks at the difference between two meshes, uh, especially if they're very close or identical meshes, and how one moves will then move the other mesh. Like it's um, kind of like imagine putting your hand in a plastic bag, right? And as you move your hand around, the plastic bag deforms, it wraps around it. Uh, the same thing is going to be true here. The deformation of the underlying mesh is going to push the, um, the mesh that sits on top, which is the one that we're calling wrap. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on wrap first, and then I'm going to uh, control click on maker. Uh, I'm doing this, by the way, when the blend shape has not yet been activated. So it's just sitting at zero. And I'm going to go to deform, wrap, options. And I just want to make sure that exclusive bind is selected um, and um, the rest of these options are fine. And I'll choose create. So now let's try this. What we're going to do is go in here. I'm going to grab this guy who has the blend shape applied. Uh, trigger the blend shape and what's happened now is we have caused the um, our maker to uh, take that blend shape and it has pushed or wrapped its influence over um, our wrap uh, geometry and why this is important is because remember we uh, flipped ma uh, the maker in negative x, but we didn't flip wrap, which means that wrap's vertex order matches this now, which is really important. And just for safety's sake, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate off wrap again, and that way I should be able to get wrap to come out without having any uh, history applied to it. I don't have to worry about you know running into some kind of uh, problem uh, as far as Maya is concerned. And this can now be my mouth scrunch uh, right side. So here's what we had. Uh, we have the mouth scrunch left. That was our original one. This will be our mouth scrunch right. And what I can do is get rid of the rest of these guys here and uh, go ahead and just treat this like a regular blend shape. Uh, so I would select that, select that, and select our target choose blend shape and uh, just move this down and so this is polysurface one is this guy here I'll just click on that polysurface one cool works and wrap two goes the other side so now it's working all right maybe seems like a lot of work uh, but it for me it's uh, faster than trying to re-sculpt it and it's at least you know it's quite accurate that way so of course what I'm going to want to do here because I'm not actually using this scene is to go ahead and um, uh, export this out. But I'm going to export it out back at its default position. So I'll just uh, get rid of those two guys. So put that translate X back at zero, and we'll just say file export selection, um, and I am going to call it uh, find my mouse scrunch mouse scrunch right. There we go. All right, so that sets us up with all of the, the major um, blend shapes that we need to get from ZBrush. And in the next videos, um, we'll take a look at how to set it up and to create the uh, left and right versions as well.